Ah uh, yes, The Sims 3. I remember back when this game released in 2009. I was a little bit sceptical at first. I mean, with any release of a new Sims game, you're getting, getting less features because the previous one, you've probably bought expansion packs for. Maybe not all of them, but you've had more content and you're now losing a lot of content for a new game. I knew there was going to be some features I didn't like. And at first, I didn't. And it took me a while to grow to love this game. But it became one of the best ones in the series for me. Although most people say Sims 2 is where it still peaked. And my mum and sister will probably agree with that. For me, the open world of Sims 3 is where it really became a good game. I was a little bit disappointed, and still am to this day, in the fact that you can't have one world save and multiple families like you had in The Sims 2. You'd have to start a new save game to create a new family. The only alternative way of doing this is to actually switch active families, which then puts your other family in the control of an AI, which isn't always favourable. Another way you could potentially probably do this is by using mods to expand the family size and owning multiple houses, which you can do with certain updates. Now, I installed this game from the CD, so that means there was no updates, no extra content, no features. This is raw how the game would have released exactly from the disc. I made sure not to update it, which was pretty easy to do considering I didn't have Origin at the time. Didn't even use the EA Download Manager to update the game. So I want to take a little quick look at this loading screen and the simplicity behind it because later on they sort of changed the loading screens and in my opinion I think it makes the game longer loading times. Of course you can disable that awkward loading screen but I just love the fact that this is so simple. Now moving on with all that, since we all know it's going to be completely updated that means some things might be missing that you know are true to be in the sims but this is exactly how the game would have released this is installed from the cd and from the disc let's get on with it so i began my journey by creating a single sim i didn't really want to overcomplicate things or make things too difficult for myself since i'd not played the sims 3 for a long time so i thought i'd just create one sim and enjoy what there was to offer with just one i thought i'd make a female sim since i don't really like playing male sims all the time or I thought I'd have a bit of a unique adventure as a female sim for once. After much deciding, and I'm terrible with names, I decided to call her Eleanor Levins. I don't know why this is the name I gave to her, this is just the name I chose, and I think it quite suits now, looking back. I decided to mess around with the colour changer a little bit, just to show that Sims 3, even base game, had some really random colours with the pink and the green. I'm not sure why this was an option, but I think it's quite interesting too mess around with it. I also messed around with the weight and the muscle definition, something again that was I believe unique to Sims 3. I know you could change the weight in Sims 2 but I don't think you could do it on this scale. Anyway with that I got into creating the hairstyle. Even base game I think there was quite a lot of hairstyle choices and even better was this colour changer and you could change your hairstyles pretty well and customise it pretty interestingly a feature I absolutely adore to this day. The fact that you can change it and mess around with it. I decided to mess around with this for a bit until I found a hairstyle I liked. Once I got these pink tips, I decided to keep it and go ahead with using that. I liked this hairstyle and I thought I'd keep it. I was also creating quite a generic simple sim. Since I normally create wacky or crazy sims, I thought I'd create someone preferably somewhat normal. Then I went ahead and chose some generic eyebrows. I don't think I was going to at first go in depth with the detailing of customising the sim but once I get into this I kind of get lost and start really editing things so I think I sort of lost track of what I was doing and went really in depth into editing and I actually love this again as part of Sims 3 the ability to customise each part of the face individually and really shape your sim to be whatever you want them to be and I think this is quite a unique feature again to the Sims 3, so I spent a whole lot more time on this than I probably should should have or I probably wanted to. I really like the end results and again I really love this feature so I'm not too disappointed in myself spending too long messing around with all the settings and getting exactly what I wanted to get out of her. 
I normally have this fascination for making them have really big anime sort of eyes. I think I messed around with the eyes quite a bit and actually I didn't like the results and I think I ended up in the end just resetting them back to the default size. So I sort of probably messed around too much with this again for something that didn't need to be shown. So I've probably either cut that or speed it up, whatever works. Once again, I love the fact that you can use the color palette to change the color of anything. And I used it again to change the eye color. I also have a massive fascination for these cute little button noses. So I had to customize her nose until I was completely satisfied with how it looked. It has to look just perfect for me. I don't know why I have this obsession with noses, but I don't like ugly noses. And I don't know why, but I just have to have the perfect nose, so I made sure I did this. I then went ahead and customised her lips. Now, I seem to have some sort of weird thing with uh, female lips, and it's the case that they just look grey and bland, and I have to add makeup, which I do later. I just thought I'd mention this, and I remember when I was a kid, and we used to completely just raise the corners, rotate so that it always looked like they were smiling. Now, I know this kind of looks stupid now, but looking back, that's what we used to what me and my sister always used to do and it's kind of funny to think back to it. So once again I messed around with the makeup for way longer than I probably should have because I think I only ended up choosing one makeup thing but I had to have a look at the eyeliner and I don't think I could really see what the eyeliner was affecting since, since the eyelashes are already quite vibrant and popping. Uh, I decided to give her some red lipsticks so it sort of brings the colour out in her lips a little bit. I could have probably customised the colour but I think I just went with a generic one that makes it look a little bit more like her lips have some colour rather than looking grey and bland. I did also look at the blusher and messed around with this a little bit but I think it just makes her look a little bit silly really. Sometimes the makeup is a little bit too over the top in my opinion on this game and the eyeshadow can really show this. So. Finally, I got into creating the clothes, and again, there was quite a lot of choices here for base game. Now, people could say, oh, there's not the choices I want, or I want more choices. And I get that, there's some awful clothing choices, and there is some really bad designs, but I just want to mention that I spent a long time looking at the clothing, and even I was like, hmm, this isn't quite what I want, but as you can see, once again, we can use the customization tools to c actually customize the color to exactly what we want and I even go into the creator pattern style thing and select a pattern which again I absolutely love the fact that you can select any pattern from this palette and decide to customize it including the color and everything about it. You can put any, any style of pattern on any piece of clothing I believe so anyway I think you can even create your own in a creation tool that they released, which again, absolutely brilliant. Once again, I spent way too long trying to find the perfect skirt. I just couldn't find what I wanted, and I liked the design and style of this one skirt, but I just didn't like the colour, and I was sat there thinking, well, what am I going to do? And I decided that instead of just trying to stick with one of the pre-designed colours that I would once again go into the customization tools and create my own colour, which took me a bit longer than I'd like to admit, but I think I really came out on top of this once I was happy with what I got, and it kind of really makes her look, once again, really unique because you can really go into the customization tools and create some really fantastic sort of designs and adds personality to your sims to be able to do this. and. It's another thing that is part of The Sims 3 that I just can't live without now. The ability to just completely overhaul and customise clothing and even furniture to however you want to see fit. I actually went to move on to formal and I completely forgot to do the shoes. So I had to go back and look at the shoes. Which I did and once again I think there was quite a few choices and I was a bit torn for choices here but... I just want to mention another thing, and that was when I was a kid and playing this game, or well, I wasn't really, I don't really know how old I was, but I was much younger. I used to have a fascination with making them barefoot, <laughs> I just kind of find that funny that I would have all my sims running around barefoot and with no shoes on. It isn't very practical, especially when they go out, but I think it's kind of cool. I also want to mention that 
I think at some point I was looking for the ability to create more than one outfit, which doesn't look to be available, which must mean they added that in an update, because I remember you could add multiple outfits, which means they would change outfits day by day. Well, not day by day, but I think they would choose between the amount of outfits you had, and I can't remember the maximum, whether it was like five or, or something like that, but I know there was a feature that was added eventually where you could create multiple outfits, so you could have multiple everyday outfits, and I think that's kind of a cool feature once again to be able to customize your outfit to the point where there's multiple choices of what you want to wear. I also debated giving her some socks or tights at some point, and I really didn't like the look of it in the end, so I think I just completely abandoned that idea and left it as it was. I did eventually, however, add a watch to her, and I actually went and created the style since I didn't like the colour once again. And this is her final everyday outfit. Then I went ahead and moved on to formal. Now, before I speed this footage up completely, I actually went back to the hairstyles and unlocked the hairstyles. Again, another amazing feature. This allows you to put different hairstyles on different outfits, which is kind of unique, and I actually went through some of the hat options since I was thinking about giving her a hat for formal, but in the end I decided on this flower in the hair sort of style, which I kind of like the looks of, but I didn't like the look of the flower, so I went ahead and customised it once again. For the rest of this outfit though, I will speed it up and I will just show the end result. I then went to go and give her the same watch that I had already given her, and I was a little bit disappointed that I couldn't actually find the colour, so I customised the colour. But then I remembered that you can save your styles, and another great feature, because if you find it, if you create a style you really like, you can save it, and then apply it to another sim later. Now, I tend not to do this because I like to create unique sims or unique outfits, but I wanted this watch, so I saved it. And I could go ahead and save all the other outfits, which I find interesting. With all that said, this was her final formal attire. I then moved on to sleepwear, which once again, I will speed up and just show the end result. I also were, I don't spend long looking, but I think I was a little bit like, where are the bunny slippers? Because I remember you always used to giving the Sims bunny slippers for sleepwear, but I didn't spend long looking at this. And maybe it was part of an expansion and I knew it, but kind of wouldn't have given her them anyway because I don't like to, once again, give them all of it. But I remember it being something I used to do quite a bit once they were unlocked, so. And once again, I customised her hair for night time to something that I kind of liked the look of. And this was her final sleep attire. Then I moved on to Athletic, which I kind of got a bit confused by because the game had actually chosen the same outfit somehow, exactly the same with the same colours for Athletic. I don't know if this was a glitch or if it just was completely coincidence, but it had sort of set the same outfit apart from obviously adding shoes. So. With that, I went ahead and customised to Athletic and changed what I wanted to change. I also debated making the shorts the same white rim as the top, but then I decided I liked the black. But, once again, I don't like EA's half black, I made it black black. Which, again, I don't know why the default black isn't darkest black, but it's not hard to edit once again. I also went ahead and made the shoes match a little bit, and once again I just want to mention how easy it is to drag and drop colours to other palettes. Which, again, another great feature that you can just, once again, copy the colours to a different part of the outfit or wherever you want to copy it to. With that, this was her final athletic wear. I then went ahead and moved on to swimwear. I actually tried to find a matching swimwear set, but once again, thanks EA for making the colours completely match. And by this I mean, not at all but it wasn't something that was hard to fix. Once again, all I had to do was drag the colour from one part to the other bit that I wanted it to match, and the swimsuit then matched the colour. 
didn't take much work or effort if it weren't for her swaying backwards and forwards which made it hard to place where I wanted to place it but apart from that it was done quite easily then this was her final swimwear I then made sure to go back to every day so that she wasn't wearing swimwear for the next part of this game which is selecting the traits and I spent quite a bit of time uh, reminiscing over the traits and what a great system it was and I loved most of these traits if not all of them there's pretty much not many I don't like the looks of and creating a unique personality is something that's absolutely fantastic so after a long look I decided to go for these traits excitable family orientated artistic bookworm and finally childish With the traits finally selected, it was time to choose a life wish. And once again, I took a look at every single one individually to decide what I wanted to pick. I thought maybe I'd choose a difficult one since I know how to play this game, but I decided I'd just choose a really light and easy one to do so that I could play however I wanted to play, which again is something I love about The Sims 3. So I ended up picking Illustrious Author, since the only requirements were to master the writing skill and the painting skill. I then went ahead and picked her favourites. Now I've never really seen how much of an effect these have in the game and I don't think they were used that much but I know you can create their favourite meal or maybe even have their favourite music on the radio and they'll get an extra bonus from it which again I think is kind of cool. I then went ahead and customised the voice, something I think was once again unique to The Sims 3 and I spent again probably way longer than I needed to but I like the fact that I could you know really choose what voice I wanted her to give her. And with that she was finally done so I decided to finish not wanting to create another sim as I previously mentioned. Now it was finally time to choose a house. Now at the start you would have seen me trying to exit the tutorial because I normally would use a I don't know if it's a glitch but there's kind of a feature where you can edit the town and place your sim into a house you've already created or create a house straight from the edited town and then later on when it comes to selecting the household you can actually select the house you've just customized with the sim already placed in it. This is a way to bypass actually having to cheat and maybe I'll do a video on it at one point where I show how to get a basically a mansion without cheating in the game if I can remember exactly how to do it and if anyone's interested in that. It's also worth mentioning that at some point the audio cut out for the game. I don't know why this happened, whether it was because it was from the disc or some sort of update that prevented the audio from playing but from this point on there's not any audio but I do fix this later by exiting the game and relaunching it so sorry about the no audio in the game. Anyway after much decision I finally decided to choose this house. Anyway, I decided to leave the tutorial running. I don't know why, because I don't think it could have taught me anything I didn't already know, since I've played this game a lot. But I actually think it was quite interesting that the tutorial left you on map mode, and taught you how to, first of all, find your sim. I think this sort of adds to the fact that, you know, you are now in an open world game, because normally the game would zoom straight into your household and then you would be on that lot and that's the only place you were at whereas this game straight away after picking your sim at least for the tutorial I don't know if when you start a new game without the tutorial if it zooms in but from this point of view you can actually see that the map is still there and this sort of again just shows the open world of Sims 3 and the fact that you can go anywhere although it probably isn't clear straight away it becomes clear quite quickly then the game decides to teach us about how to move the camera in a 3d environment I think this game is beautiful, even to this day. I can't remember how intuitive the controls are on Sims 2, but I don't think you can get this sort of 
camera angles in Sims 3 that you can in Sims 2. The game also teaches us how to lower and raise the walls as well as setting up half walls or low walls. Now when I was younger, once again, I probably would have played this game with the walls fully down and I kind of understand why I don't want to see the walls, I just want to see what's going on inside the houses but I actually now like to play half walls because I like to see some of the walls and especially if you play stuff on the walls you, you want to see what's going on and paintings and stuff and I think it's kind of pretty to play half walls. The game then teaches us how to move the sim and how to interact with the world. It also teaches us how to build and buy. Now I kind of think it's a bit pointless that it asked us to buy a couch even though the house already had a couch since I chose furnished anyway. But as you can see I sell the old couch and place a new one which I think the game is pretty well in teaching you basically that you can sell and buy anything you want to buy which again this is quite a good tutorial for its time. After messing around with the couch for way longer than I needed to, even pressing the alt button to move the couch off of the grid, which I don't think the game actually teaches you, but I already knew this again as playing The Sims 3 for a long time. The game finally asks us to interact with the couch, and I do so by telling her to sit down on the couch. Once again, it's such a simple thing that the game teaches you, but I think it's sort of showing you the different ways between wishes and all that. Now in The Sims 2 we had wants and fears and I do still like that aspect but I think the wishes, something that I didn't like at first, is something that I actually enjoy now because you can decide which ones you want to pick and decide which ones you don't want as well as not having to worry about something to fear but also I think there's certain events that can happen such as a fire which can leave you with a negative moodlet. Once again the moodlets were something that I probably didn't like at first but I grew to love because they just really enhanced the game. I then went and took a look at the options. Now, Sims 3 has some really weird options because you can set the options at the main menu but you can't actually set the length of the life state. Now I normally play this game on the longest life state because I like the Sims to live for a long time because I know I'll play this game for that period of time that they will live for that long and I don't like them to live so short that they pretty much gone before you can remember who they were. So I like to play on the longest one I can play on. Uh, I think I actually set it to long here rather than epic which is kind of bizarre for me because I normally play it on the longest. It's also worth noting that I don't know what update they added this in but they eventually added the fact of, of the ability to actually customise each sim's life state so you could change how long children lived or how long elders live and I think that's kind of, I think that'd be quite a unique thing to look at if we get there. Now I didn't plan on making this into a series or parts but this has already gone on for way longer than I wanted it to go on for and I know there's not been much gameplay here and I wanted to include the gameplay in it but I didn't want this video to be over an hour long so I will split this into two parts and perhaps three if I have too much gameplay recorded. With all that being said this is it for now so thanks for watching and See you in the next one.